So it's the next day. We're back on the Supra. We're gonna finish out the front wells. We gotta make some mods on the hood, make some clearance. So we're masking that off so we can lop it up so it doesn't damage the paint. And then we're gonna head to the back and start working on the rear. So as you can see, I just finished cutting our first cut for the front. Now, this is not the final cut. I don't know if this is where I'm gonna end up at. I don't have wheels or tires yet. So once that get in, or if we can borrow some before this thing goes to paint, I'll be able to double check all my work. Once I double check all the work, we're gonna leave this gap open and we'll let the body shop just fill that out for us. They're gonna repaint this whole area. Pretty much done on the this side of the hood. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side now. So I'm marking where the body kit is and I'm just gonna tape from that point down and then we'll do a second marker which is gonna be our cut line. All right, so as you can see, I laid this pan, this plastic panel here, and we molded it to it. And there's some gap, and this is just to make the body shops work easier. That way they can just seam seal or bundle or seal this whole area right here to get in one piece. This is extremely big on purpose. That way they can trim back to, and they can use whatever they need to use. Everything else they can just cut and throw away. All right, so we just got done doing this side. There's the line that I drew, and as you can see, it's completely flush. We mocked up the uh, body kit that goes right here in front, and it's actually a perfect uh, flush with this. So we have a little bit of a gap. Um, we're gonna do the same thing we did here on the other side, and then we're gonna see how we can close out that gap, whether it's to use the same ABS plastic, or that we should leave it to the body shop and they can seal it up. We'll see. Who's talking? Which one of you are talking? Oh, we're cutting the rear You're quarter. talking. We're cutting the rear quarter panel, bro. Which is 
got done cutting this quarter panel. And the next step, man, as you can see, it's a really rough cut. Quinn made me do it like this. Uh, next step, we're gonna smooth it all out. Then we are probably gonna, I don't know, throw a tire in here, see how much clearance we have. See what it looks like with an actual yeah. wheel on the well. Yeah. And then we'll weld it. We'll, we'll weld the pinch and then we'll seal, seal it. And we'll go to the next one. Now I make the first cut. Look at that, I'm gonna have to make a metal plate to cover the excessive gap between the panel and the wheel wheel. I think I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna cut out here. Then come in. And then this needs to be trimmed even higher. It's really hard to, it's really hard to get this whole thing into one piece of metal to be perfect because every angle needs to be perfect. If it's not perfect, then the wheel well, the metal wheel well will not fit correctly. And it takes time, it's a lot of measuring, a lot of cutting, a lot of trimming until you get it right. And then you have to weld it, and you have to pray that the weld, the heat from the weld, doesn't bend it and warp it, and then you're back to square one, so. We got one of the old wheels off the car, so we're gonna throw it on the car, jack it up with the air suspension um, decompressed so that we can see where the top of the tire hits to see if we cut high enough. All right, so as you can see right here in the rear quarter panel, the rear bumper is already hitting the tire. Here's good, good, good. Now right here, we start running into an issue where it starts to hit. Not hit, but it's not gonna clear the wheel that's coming over here. The wheel that we're gonna be putting in this car is gonna be like, like wide. The OD of this wheel and tire. It's fine, it's gonna be the same one as the wheel we're putting in here, but this is way thinner, right? So once we go with the thicker tire, it's gonna be hitting all this right here. So we need to clear some more of this. Seems like up here. here. Okay. That's our new cut line. It's a beautiful line. All right, first layer off. You see all this excessive metal? All these gotta go. So I'm gonna be trimming right up there. If you guys look up here, this is even with this now. And that's how much I had to take out to get the maximum amount of space so the tire can, so the car can be completely slammed and there still be a small gap between the tire and the wheel wheel and the car will still be able to roll or at least go to his max lower height. Um, all this will be trimmed out, this will be trimmed out and then it'll be one solid piece of metal going across and no debris, no rocks, nothing's gonna get into the car. So next, I'm gonna grab the uh, floppy disk and I'm gonna smooth everything out. We're gonna take all this undercoating off from the wheel well and we're gonna start taking measurements for a template. So we just finished cleaning this off, got it all polished so that we can weld to it. The outer lip here, we're gonna have a plate, so that's gonna be welded along the top. And then on the inside of the fender well, we cleared off some of this. So this is a, pr a protective coating of wheel wells. That's what the stuff is made out of. It's kind of like a, like a factory runner line, so that rocks and all this stuff, and so it protects it from rust. So we had to blast that away to get at the bare metal on the underside. Clean it up, make it nice so that we can weld to it. Once we're done over here, then we're gonna move on to the other side. All right, this side of the plate's gonna get cut off. This side we're using. And then, and that's it, man. Just cut it and play with it. All right, that's it. We are ready to weld. I have my piece of metal here. It is cleaned up on the place that needs to be cleaned up.
So whenever you weld what I just did right now, if you force it too much so it can close the gap manually, what happens is the quarter panel can tend to move right can disturb from its original shape so what happens is you will create which has happened to me before you will create some gaps in between the body kit so before we didn't have we had no gaps in between this and this and sometimes after you get down welding you have like a small gap that wasn't there before which means you force something too much one way but in our case we got lucky or well not lucky we just experienced so it is so now that we double check i'm going to take this back out and then I'm gonna continue welding the uh, wheel well to make sure it's solid and it will seam seal it tomorrow when the seam seal gets here. That's it for today. The seam seal will arrive tomorrow. So tomorrow when it gets here, we just put seam seal everywhere. That's just a primer that I threw in there so it can stop corrosion or any rust or anything that's gonna get in there. So that's it, I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is the next day now, and me and Quinn finished putting the body kit out on this side. Uh, since we already finished the we will cover. That's all done. Now that this is done, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So let's go with it real quick. Okay, so Quinn already took half of it off. Uh, we have our line drawn here, which is the wrong line. We are gonna have to go higher. And one of the things that we need to be careful and uh, keep in mind is like this right here. The uh, gas cap door, because our wheel cut needs to be like up here. But I believe it goes like right under it. We just gotta, these lines just has to move a little bit higher. Everything else stays the same. So we should be okay, but we're just gonna have to measure three times more than we did on the other side, just because of this. But it's no big deal. We've been here, done this before plenty of times, so. Flare kit comes up and then it, and then it goes down. Under. Right. So like with the Eclipse body <laughs> kit, it went over the gas cap. This one goes under, so we can't cut into that because then you're going to see that and and one way to get the actual measurement that we need is to put the tire in here like we did on the other side raise it up and then literally go by the measurement of the tire it should give us exact cutting line that we need and we'll have everything done This line right here is the, where the body kit, the lower part of the body kit is. So anything about this, we're in trouble. Anything below this, we're golden. When it comes to tire wise, it, all this is clear. But then here's, our cut needs to be moved this way. Like all this is part of our cut. All right, so looking at this one, this side is completely different than the other side. We have a lot of stuff that could potentially be in the way of the wheel and tire when air out completely than the other side. And when I mean a lot, I mean none of this is on the other side. If you look at the other side, none of this is there. None of this is there. The only thing we have is just literally the shotgun and these lines right here.
All right, so we have enough weld for the outside of the uh, wheel wheel. Uh, I'm gonna raise the car up and start welding some parts of the inside. And I'm not gonna go to the way across, there's no need for it because we're gonna seam seal the rest of it. So I'll tack weld the inside and once we're done with the inside, uh, we have one more piece. So this is gonna be a three piece area because of the gas, uh, the gas filler area. And then all, all this will be cut off. Don't burn the car. Evan said. That's it, one and two done. Number three is the last one, which is this one right here. It looks kind of like a triangle shape type, kind of. Um, so we'll get a piece of metal here. We'll cover this up, we'll weld here, here, and then a few tacks on each side. And that's it. So by the time I get done with this, we have a set of wheels coming, which uh, we should be able to test fit everything and make sure everything clears. piece of the puzzle. Seam seal, baby. Let's go. All right, so we got our seam sealer here. So we're gonna go through and seal all the plating to make sure that it won't get water or any of the elements inside. So instead of welding the entire panel, we're gonna fill it with seam sealer. Okay, so now, uh, number one, thank you TJ and Calvin for bringing the Supra over. We took a look at it and I think we went above and beyond than what they did because we were trying to play it safe. We didn't have to set the wheels or tires here. Um, so we clearance way more than what we needed to. So surprisingly, you don't have to clear too much when you buy this body kit. I thought, I mean, we went massive. We went max on everything on clearance just to make sure that everything, we weren't gonna have any issues. So this is it. We have the stock wheels on the driver's side and we have the big wheels on the passenger side. We're gonna have the same offset and this is the uh, area where the gas tank is out where all the stuff is in it. So if everything clears with, at this point, then we should be good. More. Okay, stop. <laughs> so done. That's all the way down. That's it. Good. We have like half an inch still between this and this. Oh! Hey. 
Dang, it goes way low in the front. That goes low. Nice. All right, so the Street Hunters kit is officially on the Supra. We've got all the fab work done. We've got all the seam sealing. Everything is mounted and we're ready to go to SOS to drop offs. Also, these are our new wheels. So we purchased these from TJ, so these are going to be staying on the car. Beautiful. And these are HRE three-piece forged wheels. This is the C106. We have the same set of wheels on our E92 that we gave away. And I think one of the best looking designs. And when TJ got them on the car, we were all super jealous. Uh, and I'm happy that we're running them on this car. So that means he's getting a new set of wheels. We're also getting a new set of wheels and what we feel is like perfect, perfect spec for this car. It looks so sick. Yeah. Yep. All right, so tomorrow it's leaving off to SOS to get painted and finished. When it gets back here, we're gonna have a ton of other mods to go on this car. It is going to be awesome. But the sweepstakes is live now to win this car on throttle.com. Every dollar you spend is an entry. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.